Welcome to this technical corner where we're talking about an iconic uh, name in machine tools. I'm with Ross Milne from Ram Engineering and Tooling. Uh, Ross, Broadbent Stanley, a product yes. that you supply. Um, just looking at the 140 year history. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, some machines, aren't they? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot of changed in 140 years, but where we where we stand at the moment, the machines are now made in Taiwan, um, but we're using IP from the original Broadbent Stanley now. So very rigid machines, very strong and well priced. Yeah, I mean, how, how, how big do they go? I mean, you know, length and diameter, what's... what's Honestly, what's how long is a piece of string? This particular one that we're looking at here, this is the LD range. The LD range can go up to 12 metre in length in one metre increments. Um, and we can turn on here up to 2.3 metres, mm. depending on the size that you go for. But we have other ranges like the can range, which is even bigger than that. And what about how they're built? I look at a lot of uh, these flatbed lathes. Yep. People talk about one-piece castings. Mm -hmm. um, what's what's good about you know this their yep. offering? I think the 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 big difference with the Broadbent Stanley, if you if you can stand over the top and look down at the casting and look at the webs that are holding the castings together, you can tell just by that simple moment of looking at the casting how rigid that machine is going to be. Mm -hmm. Some have got thin, narrow webs that are crisscrossing. Ours are very robust, big chunky beefy areas because if you think about it if you're spinning something on here this is a 14 inch spindle bore this is a pneumatic chuck on here if you're spinning something at, uh, at say 200 rpm on there that's a lot of force going through that bed that's anchoring it to the floor we can take a 10 mil depth of cut on this and it doesn't even blink really okay i mean a, a lot of these machines are well, they, they need to be powerful, don't they? You they know, do. the headstocks yep. need to be yep. um, also very accommodating in the diameters of, of, of bar that you can bury. Definitely. So where do we stand with this, um, this, this the, range? The, this particular one here is 14 inch, but we can go from, say, 6 inch up to 32 inch through the spindle bore. I mean, that's a serious spindle bore. Yeah, and what sort of power are you pumping on the... Uh... Uh, well, we can go from 30 kilowatts up to, believe it or not, 150 kilowatts. Mm. You wouldn't get that on the LD range, but you would certainly get that on the cans and the BNs. Yeah, and where are you going to need that? You know, you talk about that that sort of power. If, if you think about it, I, I think we only ask that question because we don't come across it very often. But mm. if you think of giant uh, components that are coming out of steel mills, this, this type of area, or if you're trying to spin a complex part that is essentially square, but has a couple of round ends, how would you do it? You would do it in a VTL or you would do it in a very, very robust horizontal machine. And what are the options open to me as well here? Because I, I look at some machines like this and I see they start to incorporate milling and yep. you know yep. turrets and, and tool posts. Yep. Can you maybe give us a yeah. you know, guide yeah. as to what you can get yeah. with it? The norm with this type of machine, the, the LD range is either a four post turret or an eight or a 12 um, station turret. What can we do with it? We can go to driven tooling, absolutely. But we can also go to a Y-axis. So the Y-axis would sit in this orientation on the machine. Yeah. You can so have you a can still get a Y-axis on these machines for sure. Mm. And we have various, obviously we've got a, a, a manual tailstock here, but we can have the automatic tailstock. We also have a, a, a RAM idea on the, 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 the twin bedway. So we can have a RAM that can go down and machine features on the inside of your component part. So. Sometimes they're simple machines. Sometimes it can be what quite about boring attachments. Boring attachments. Again, when the when the turret is in the the home position, if you like, you can have a boring attachment mounted on the same slideway at the back. Again, it's all about rigidity when you're boring. Mm. So mount it on the back, mount it directly to the slide, put your boring bar in and down the hole. Um, with this heritage, Ross, many machines out in the field. I mean, Absolutely. it's a name we all know. But. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's an argument that it's changed a lot over the years. The machines that we are getting now, we know are robust. As I said earlier on, we're taking a 10 mil depth of cut with this. The machine's not even blinking. The load meter is just sitting lovely in the middle. Yeah. Um, and this one has a FANUC controller. These, yep. th is this pretty standard? FANUC, Siemens, that's the norm. Yeah. That's the norm. Okay. We, do, we do offer Fagor as well, but we don't, the UK doesn't tend to buy a lot of Fagor yeah, you, controls, gonna, but you can have it. You can have more success, <laughs> certainly with the FANUC. Uh, and so forth. Um, very, very interesting. Large turning, flatbed lathes. Um, the range is very extensive. You want to uh, visit Ram's website where you'll be able to find out more detail on these machines, Absolutely. I'm sure. And obviously yep. talk to Ross directly if you have a, uh, a requirement for a machine of this size, strength and power. That's it for this technical corner. What about Broadbent Stanley?